The people in charge of my care, Cindy Kramer, the geriatric caseworker, and Simone, took away my phone. They sought to isolate me, to over-medicate me, and to make me feel worthless. My daughter, Simone, took away my photos, my pocketbook, my clothing, my jewelry, and they left, they left me feeling a prisoner. And without all those things, I felt abandoned, lonely, and sad. I, I told my daughter, Simone, and Cindy Kramer how much I wanted a telephone, how much it meant to me, and they said that was too bad. I was not allowed to receive food delivery packages or letters. They wanted my isolation to be complete. I was not allowed to leave my facility and go outside. They didn't give me any explanation to why I couldn't go out. They badmouthed my family and friends. My cousin Gordon tried to help me get out of the predicament I was in with Cindy, the caseworker, and my daughter Simone, and the police didn't do anything to help. Simone, my daughter, all my albums were gone and I rescued six pictures, put them in my wallet. She tore them all out and put in a picture of she and her husband. She barged in all the time. She had a key to my place. She would just come barging in. I could be in the bathroom, in my bedroom, and she would tell me how much I should appreciate her. I was not aware that there was an order of incapacity against me. I never agreed to an order of incapacity. I even took care of my own meals. I was more independent. I took care of my wash. I took care of everything around my apartment. There was no reason for that. My court-appointed attorney never told me that I was about to have a hearing, and I asked about it, too. I told Josh I wanted a new attorney, and he, he did nothing about it. I wanted to speak to the judge to state my case and to refute the charges against me. Josh Rosenberg never let me speak to the court. I had no idea that Josh Rosenberg, my court-appointed attorney, was telling the judge that I didn't know the difference between the lie and the truth. Josh Rosenberg never explained anything to me about the court process. I had no idea that Josh Rosenberg was representing Cindy and me. That's a conflict of interest. I had no idea that my daughter Simone was charging me fees for being power of attorney. I told Cindy I didn't want my daughter to have power of attorney. I didn't want her to be in charge of my case, and it got nowhere. Cindy didn't do anything to protect my interests. She pretended to like me, though. She said she liked me. I had no idea why Cindy Kramer was blocking my family from seeing me or hearing from me. Oh, I begged Simone for a phone. She said, no, I couldn't have it, and that was that. I didn't get to see my grandson, Joseph, either. Simone didn't want me to see him. I have no idea why she didn't want me to see Joseph. She made me feel terrible that she was blocking me from my only grandchild. Cindy repeatedly let Simone come in to my apartment at any time of the day or night, whether I was asleep in the bathroom, and she would just harass me. Not to have communication with the outside world made me feel lonely, a prisoner, and someplace I didn't want to be because I took care of myself. Oh, I didn't like Wickshire at all. The residents, I felt sorry for them. They were nice people, but they were not in communication. You know, they were on a different plane. They just sat around all day, and you tried to make conversation with them. It was very difficult. Living in the Wickshire in Tamarack was like being a prisoner there. Oh, Capstone is so nice. The people are wonderful, the help is good, the activities are great, the residents are cognitive. It's a nice place to call home. It's so nice living here at Capstone. It's a beautiful facility, the food is good, the help is wonderful, the residents are nice, they're friendly, we all have a good time. I feel like at Capstone I have a second chance at life like I did in at Wickshire. 
I asked to have another lawyer, and he had great references of Ron Denman. And I met with him, and he thought that I had my faculties and that he could help me. I chose Ron as my attorney because I was hoping he could help me out of the situation I was in because he had helped so many other elderly people. I'm very happy with the work that Ron is doing for me now. Ron Denman has changed my whole life. I'm in a new facility with a whole new life and new people. I think they, Cindy, and Josh and Simone took years away from my life for what they did to me. I had no idea how much money Cindy was charging me. I knew nothing about anything financial between Simone, Cindy, or Josh. I don't know why I was moved into Wickshire and they took away my telephone and blocked me. I asked Simone to have personal items moved out of storage and she refused to do it. Simone removed my wallet, my credit card, and my checks from me. She gave me a credit card, but it expired. I would like to see Josh, Simone, and Cindy held accountable to their, for their actions toward me, especially saying that I was incapacitated when I wasn't. I took care of myself. I would gladly speak out on behalf of others who have suffered the same indignities that I have. Cindy Kramer advised me not to have the press in the courtroom. Well, I thought if it could help other people, it would be good to have the press in the courtroom. Cindy told me on more than one occasion not to have the press in the courtroom. It would only stir up trouble. I didn't know what the outcome would be of having the press there, but I was not against it makes me feel terrible that she's doing these things and I don't know why. I felt abandoned, lonely, and I felt that Christine and my cousin Gordon were the only ones on my side, he and his wife. Oh, I felt so good to come here to Capstone and to know I had another chance at life. I feel at peace now. I know Christine is on my side. I have a new life. I have things to look forward to. I don't feel abandoned, I don't feel like a prisoner, I don't feel terrorized, and I hope they get their comeuppance. I don't mean to be repetitive, but I just want to know how much I appreciate Christine and how much I am shocked at what happened to me. I think Cindy, my daughter Simone, and Josh Rosenberg, my attorney, I think they were motivated by money and self-interest. I'm Carolyn Montanti, and I'm speaking out about this guardianship abuse in the hope that it will help other people not to be terrorized and to be made to feel like they're prisoners, and that they should know that there is hope for them, too. This has been a terrible time in my life. I hope it doesn't happen to anybody else and that they have the help that I have had by good family members and a good lawyer to help them out in their time of grief.